Over to you, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you to the Center for Air Power Study, and conference leaders and planners for their gracious invite on such a distinguished panel. I'm pleased to discuss with you the future of digital engineering and aerospace manufacturing. To me, digital engineering is a revolution in product development. Uh, it provides a faster time to field, a higher quality throughout the life cycle and more affordable capability and sustainment. It's a journey to achieve these goals, but I'm here today to tell you that there are proof points that validate we are realizing these goals today and that future is today. Uh, what do I base that on? I base it on my experience with Boeing's TX and T7 program that during the competition, the team went from a firm concept, which is a configuration that can close on the requirements to first flight in 36 months. And they were able to quickly expand parts of the envelope needed to demonstrate compliance to certain requirements. The demonstrated success of that program results in an inflection point for how we design and build airplanes going forward. The TX leverage methods and processes that had been in development for a while. The program was just the right opportunity to pull it all together and demonstrate at scale. Uh, the key to this success is the life cycle view of the product from day one to be able to field quicker. And we can go ahead and advance to the next slide. The key is how do you go fast? It's not by cutting corners, but to minimize or eliminate discovery and rework during testing and fielding. Move the discovery as far left as possible so you can learn quickly where rework is less costly. Digital models and tools and simulation enable us to do this. So I'm gonna give you a taste of digital engineering and the potential it has as we demonstrated on TX. So if we could advance to uh, a couple slides. First of all comes the, the design phase, and it really starts with the create phase. Um, it sets the foundation for the whole digital thread. As you start the design process, uh, you're utilizing tools like MDAO, which is a multidiscipline aero optimization, doing trades on the configuration to help size the wing, as well as fuselage, looking for those uh, key intersections for uh, parameters. Um, Going forward, I would see that we could incorporate even more parameters and be able to look at a web of trade studies that will help us uh, further optimize the configuration from the very start. With the great advances in high-speed computing, once the configuration is selected, the use of CFD for full body solutions can be used to establish arrow and loads to help inform the product designers quicker than the traditional method of designing a wind tunnel model, testing a wind tunnel model, and analyzing the results. It's all about getting information and data into the hands of the product designers as quickly as possible. Now that doesn't say you don't do wind tunnel tests, but it just says you, you can get the data to the product designers quicker, and then you can go off and validate the CFD results later as you, uh, as you start turn, uh, learning. The use of 3D models in the design phase has been around for a while, but you have to leverage the power it provides. It provides an authoritative source of data, one that everyone is working in. It allows you to do virtual design reviews. It provides a, a level of collaboration with the team. But the key is you must manage the interfaces. And this allows you to distribute the work to different work centers or design centers if desired but you must manage the, the interfaces. One of the key things is, again, eliminate rework to be able to go fast. So the teams must be on the same cadence. Um, in traditional or legacy programs, you may have the structural engineers designing structure and releasing parts for fabrication. While the systems engineers are, are still defining their systems and then later on to find where the routings 
and holes will go. That creates we work, the parts are already released. So with model-based definition, everyone can work on the same parts, but you also have to have everyone at the same maturity level. You don't release parts until the full part is, is uh, defined. And so that allows you to release parts to the supply chain and they do it one time. Uh, we realized a 75% improvement in engineering quality through this approach. We'll just say MBD, model-based design, is just not the definition of the product, not just the geometry, but it also includes the metadata that has the analysis embedded within the models. Having the entire life cycle in mind as you start the design, we brought in mechanics that were going to build the airplane. We brought in maintainers that were going to maintain the airplane. We helped them influence the design up front to, again, minimize rework and have that, that mindset of what the final product had to do. I think some of our best systems engineers were the mechanics, the maintainers, the users, and the air crew to help us influence the design. On to the build. The goal is a simple, efficient build. With everything modeled in three dimension, simulation analysis can be performed to virtually simulate and assemble the product hundreds of times before metal, before parts are even fabricated. This helps determine the optimal build sequence. It also allows you to uh, model for ergonomics. Having everything modeled in three dimensions allows us to know exactly where to drill the holes. Confidence in the models allows the holes to be drilled at the suppliers and have the parts come in fastener ready with no drilling on assembly. So what did this yield for us? We saw a 98% reduction in drilling defects. It eliminated the injuries that were associated with repetitive hand drilling. Also allowing suppliers access to the models allowed us to feed part definition directly from our digital engineering authoritative source of data, whether they were machine parts or 3D printed parts. So the error in translation was, was eliminated. Once we had parts, model-based work instructions provided simple graphic instructions for the mechanics to assemble the aircraft. It can be brought, the work instructions can be easily brought to the aircraft itself uh, to eliminate wasted time and going back and forth to terminals or looking up things like torques. We also implemented augmented reality, virtual reality to help train and practice before work on the physical product. This was an enabler to minimize pro, uh, rework. It helped us go way down on the learning curve. I see much more virtual AR, VR uh, applications as we go forward with assembly. 3D definition and the authoritative source allows you to know how all the parts will fit together with the goal of having self-locating parts to minimize tooling, especially the monumental tooling that is traditionally used to hold and align. You want the assembly to become the tool. That can manifest itself in a reduction in hours for assembly beyond all means. With 3D definition, but the, the accuracy is so precise, a shimless build should result. Just think what that means for sustainment, a consistency in build. You have, when you remove um, the re uniqueness of each build, what it can mean for modification and maintenance once the product is fueled. All this yields a simple, efficient, and effective build that uses fewer tools, is much more ergonomic, and also provides fewer FOD opportunities. We go to the next slide. Now there's more to digital engineering than just the product definition. The digital thread provides several benefits through testing, especially through the quality of the test article. We have physics-based models that we've used to predict how the aircraft will perform, flight, aero, loads, propulsion integration, handling qualities. We use these system models for ripped performance and logic and use them to help write the software. 
Models may start with formulas and algorithms, but they must be verified through tests. They are not a substitute. We've done verification from component level to subsystem to system level. Digital engineering should not be considered as a replacement for testing, but should help inform. It should help inform where we place the instrumentation, the tolerance of the instrumentation, the test techniques, test plans. Testing should be used to verify the models. We should be able to know where the high confidence linear areas exist and progress quickly through them so we can get to the non-linear areas, the areas of more uncertainty. The digital models drive the test efficiency by focusing on early evaluation of those areas. Key again, get to those areas and learn quickly. Let's go to the next slide. With the mindset of having the entire life cycle in mind, you can see the benefits. The product definition is all modeled. Technical pubs, maintenance manuals can all be linked to the same authoritative source. The digital models and the use of AR and BR can be used to verify the product model, use and its reach and its development. Training uses the verified models to help train in the simulator using the same software, using the same operational flight program in the aircraft as well in the simulator. The shared software between the two reduces the concurrency risk. We have vehicle management health models can be leveraged to understand where to place health monitoring and help develop predictive tools to maintain high readiness. Integrated support packages are just another element of the 3D definition for the product design. I'm going to advance to the next slide. What I've shared with you today is based upon my experience and the success demonstrated on the T7 program here at Boeing. It is an inflection point of how we design and build aircraft and we've brought the future to now. With MBD and the cadence the teams had, we were able to achieve a 75% increase in first time quality. By knowing how all the parts were joined together and simulating and the time to splice was reduced by 75% based, uh, against traditional programs. Model-based design coupled with model-based instructions results in a simple, efficient build that yields an 80% reduction in touch labor and we saw a 98% reduction in drilling defects. All this together and many other elements resulted in a 25% less development time. T7 was a pathfinder that demonstrated the benefits of future of digital engineering and advanced manufacturing. It provided a, a validation point for a faster time to field, higher quality throughout the life cycle, and enabled affordable sustainment capability. Digital engineering is still a journey, but T7 is an inflection point in that journey or how we will build aircraft and how we will design them in the future. Thank you very much.